Now the on-duty officer charged in her death is out of jail. A fellow officer shot Green, although Green had already interacted with other officers at the scene. And a St. Louis police lieutenant is under investigation this evening. And what authorities are calling a game of Russian roulette gone horribly wrong. It has been a trying year for the St. Louis Police Department. You need look no further than the slew of headlines that seem almost endless. Officers shooting other officers, a game of Russian roulette ending the life of a young cop, racist social media posts, a prosecutor refusing to allow some officers to appear in court, lawsuits over excessive force, on and on and on. It is raising an uncomfortable question in segments of the community. I've heard people use the phrase out of control in describing the St. Louis Police Department. Well, I, I, I certainly think that that's unfair. Uh, I think that uh, when you look at the St. Louis Police Department and you look at its culture, uh, uh, we didn't get here overnight. Where you'll find the St. Louis Police are largely is a function of who you ask, and many are likely to answer in some way by referring to the events in and around Ferguson five years ago. Well, I think certainly prior to Ferguson uh, in 2014, the relationship between police and the community was very fragile. It continues to be fragile. Ferguson comes up again when you ask the police union about that fragile relationship, but in a different way. Any of your officers have an adversarial feel toward the community that they police? Uh, no, not towards the community. I mean, they have an adversarial feel towards um, towards some elected officials and, and even folks in the media who, you know, disparage police and, and do so based on, on a false narrative that came out of Ferguson and other places. But many believe the slew of controversies we're seeing right now has roots that go far beyond the unrest of 2014. SLMPD Sergeant Heather Taylor has a particularly interesting take. She's head of the Ethical Society of Police, the group that advocates for the city's African-American officers. She says all the headlines are a function of a new accountability. The behavior, she says, has been there, just not the punishment. I honestly feel that a good majority of these cases would never see the light of day if we didn't have the chief that we have, uh, the restructured internal affairs division and circuit attorney who's willing to prosecute officers who are doing wrong. When people say we're out of control, it, I'm like, I'm glad that we are bringing these cases to like some of these people we knew should have been fired long ago. They have been problems. We've presented the cases to them and they've been, nope, nothing. We're sweeping under the rug, and now these things are coming to light. One example is a list of officers Circuit Attorney Kim Gardner now keeps who she will not allow to testify in court. For a variety of reasons, she says they lack credibility. The most notable case, 22 city cops who Gardner blacklisted after they were named in a probe called the Plainview Project out of Philadelphia, which tied dozens of current and former St. Louis officers to racist social media posts. It continues to fuel the mistrust in the in the criminal justice system with law enforcement, and it makes our jobs harder. So it, it hurts that victim who wants to call the police but is afraid already of the process of the criminal justice system, it makes it when you see an incident, you fail to want to call the police and be a witness because you're afraid of who you may come in contact with. And many want to know why the current officers involved still have jobs. Many don't in other cities. In Philly, people got fired. Has anybody been well, fired? Some, from, some people. Right. Well, but some people got fired. Has anybody been fired from the police, St. Louis Police Department? We're in a process. Our process is much different than the Philadelphia process. Uh, we have a civil service process uh, inside of the city of St. Louis, and it requires steps. And I know the union is strong, but can anybody tell these guys, if you're going to fix this relationship with the community, this kind of stuff has to stop? Well, uh, the city of St. Louis, prior to 2018, never had a social media policy. I implemented a social media policy that would address situations like uh, the vigilante cartoon character, the Punisher. It's preposterous and that's all we're trying to do is, is make people understand just how preposterous some of this is. The Police Officers Association has doubled down on one hand, encouraging members to use that Punisher logo that was singled out in some of the aggressive posts as a profile picture. But at the same time, the Union newspaper published a lengthy article warning officers that they are held to a higher standard on social media and suggesting they not use it at all. 
Rorta, meanwhile, points back at the circuit attorney's office as a source of the recent bad press for cops. You know, we've got a, a rogue prosecutor who's not interested in putting criminals in jail, but, you know, wants to make up things about police officers so that she can either put them in jail or put them on her stupid list. Um, you know, so it's, it's a tough time to be a police officer here. And regarding other cases where officers face criminal charges for things like unnecessarily pepper spraying protesters, Rorta lashes out at the department's own watchdogs. The Internal Affairs Division is completely out of control. Um, they are uh, not interested in, in you know, justice or um, uh, the, the best interest of the department. They're just interested in, in headhunting, and, uh, and that's what we have now is a bunch of headhunters up there. Of course, the most serious case was the death of Officer Caitlin Alex. She was off duty. Two others, Officer Nathaniel Hendren and his partner, left their duty stations and went to Hendren's home. Alex was there. They played a game of Russian roulette, according to police, and she was shot and killed. Hendren is facing charges, but the other officer, who also left his duty station while under suspension without pay, still has a job for now. It's a, it's a process. It's a, it's a process that, that I respect. Uh, uh, I believe in the rule of law and I respect the process. Does it frustrate you? Well, it does not frustrate me. Yet. In the end, this all goes back to relationships between police and the community. Edwards insists things are improving on that front and he's not alone in that sentiment. Former St. Louis Chief Dan Isom, who served on the Ferguson Commission, sees progress since those dark days in 2014 when looking at police and how they relate to the public. It appears as if things have gotten better. I mean, there have been a number of things that have happened um, during that period of time where I think there could have been unrest, um, but uh, it appears as if uh, all police departments are, are very engaged in uh, trying to make those relationships stronger. Unfortunately, it's very difficult to change a narrative when people want the narrative to be negative. But some within the department believe that narrative has been earned. We can guarantee before the year is out that we'll probably make, have other officers make front page news before. And there probably have been repeat offenders that our department has overlooked. You heard from a lot of people in this report. A final note now on who you didn't hear from. That's police chief John Hayden, who declined to be interviewed. I'm George Sells, MetroSTL.com.